Hello and welcome to Podbad Studios' animatronic version and I'm down at um, the Animal Farm Park in Bream with a rather large dinosaur. I'm a little apprehensive standing this close but I'm going to carry on. Later on we'll be talking to the guys that own these dinosaurs so you can find out all about them. Bye! <laughs> I started building props when my lads was really small. They were a big fan of Doctor Who and he loved his own Dalek so I decided to build him a big red movie Dalek and that led on to building the TARDIS after that which they could play in and out of and opening the doors and thought he was flying off to some other destination. Favourite show at the moment, I really like The Mandalorian. I think that's one of the best shows I've seen. Um, and looking back when I was younger, the old Time Tunnel series, Irwin Allen was one of my favourites as well. My favourite film prop, man, it's got to be Vincent from The Black Hole. Now, if I could build one of those, I'd love to, but the dimensions and the angles and the shapes are really difficult, but I'm still thinking about it. And maybe the best way is a 3D printer. Uh, the props that I've built and own at the moment is a lot of Jurassic Park ones. Um, I've also built a Jurassic Park fence with flashing lights on the top, um, which we use for different indoor events. Um, I've just built a Mandalorian speeder bike display um, with sounds and may put some lights on it. Uh, we've got a Toy Story bedroom display with a full-size Woody. Um, in process of building the Stranger Things with the retro bikes and what's the other one? Um, I've got an Indiana Jones display as well with the Golden Idol and the whip and the hat that people, people used to be able to put on before Covid at different events. Covid this year, it's affected the Comic Cons, I've had to cancel the two I do. Um, most of my dinosaur appearances have been cancelled. This is probably the first one we've done since February. Um, we may have a couple more outdoor events with the dinosaurs, but other than that, that's about it. Thanks David for talking to us about your prop collection. And we're going to be doing a few more Meet the Prop Collectors. Yeah, so yeah. if there's anyone out there who would like to be part of that, Drop us a line, put a comment below. Yeah, if you want to be on the show, we'll feature we'll what you chat. do and, uh, you know, you can it's really cool. tell people all about your creations. Yeah. yeah. So what are we talking about this week? Animatronics. Animatronics. What is animatronics? I haven't really got a clue, to be honest. We actually did look it up on Google this, on, on, online, to try to find the definition of this, to say? see if it would help us clarify what yeah. animatronics is. But The technique of making and operating lifelike robots, typically for use in film or TV in, or other entertainment. So it didn't help us at all, really. A bit broad, really. Is yeah. this one animatronic? You see, I don't know. I would consider him to be a robot. Now, is a robot animatronics? I don't know. He he is completely autonomous. Now, what that means is he's got a series of motors that allow his head and beak and wings and everything to move, and a series of sensors in there that then allow him to react to his environment. And he does that completely on his own. He doesn't he doesn't need us to operate him. Do he's you? looking at no, you. No, you don't, because he's turning towards me because I'm talking. Now I know. Yeah, you've got to look that way now. Camera's over there. there anyway, you go. so the is he animatronic? I don't know. He's a robot. I think of animatronics as like cable control and... Like the dragons. Yeah, like the our dragons. We operate them. They, don't, they do have a few things that just run on their own, like their smoke systems, but mainly they move their heads and their tails because we're operating See, them. a puppeteer... All right. You could say a puppeteer is controlling something animatronically. Animatronic. So the, drag the dragons, the dinosaurs that we saw, the puppeteer, the operator, is inside the costume, oh, right. moving the costume around, and then there's linkages and, then he's and things moving that the tail they can move the head and the tail yeah. and make the roar. So that is so that, that is that's an animatronic, animatronic model. And then what about morph and things like that, where things are moving? Yeah, no, I see. I think of that as an animation. Okay. I think animation and animatronics is different. So because the stop motion stuff, the... Harryhausen does, that's animation? That or kind of required the camera and it required the, the technology to yeah. create the animation. It didn't actually require an operator. Although, a lot of stuff that you see on film is radio control. 
You know, okay. and we get asked a lot about radio control systems, yeah. about when we're out and about um, some of the newer systems we use. Some of these, these more modern systems have got these diddy little antennas on them. And I remember at, being at an event once, the, uh, the a chap we speak said, where's the aerial? I said, well, that is the aerial. And he said, well, how does that work then? I said, well, it's a different kind of technology. It's not like technology from 10 years ago, which you had the big antennas sticking out. And, and obviously this makes it a little bit more complex for some people because these are all kind of computer controlled and you have to bind the receivers to the transmitters and then you have to connect the servos up. And it all gets a bit more complex and sometimes that puts people off. But anyway, to help with that, yeah. I produced actually a short video okay. that we're going to see now. And, you know, that might help you a little bit, connecting your transmitters to your receivers and maybe connecting servos up to these. Okay, so, uh, guys, have a look this at out. this. Right, we're going to do a very brief video on how to set up a radio control system. Now, we've got two different types here. We've got a six-channel radio and we've got a three-channel radio. Um, a selection of different receivers, a servo, battery and a bind pin, which are basically, they're the things that you're going to need to set up your radio control system. Okay then, so we have our transmitter and we have our receiver. And what we're going to need to do on this 2.4 gigahertz radio system is bind these two together. We bind the transmitter to the receiver. And what that then does, it locks them together so they won't be interfered with, they won't get any outside interference. Now, this is a three channel receiver, and you can tell it's a three channel receiver because it's got ports for three servos. And obviously there's the little servo motor. Um, this, for example, is a six channel. So you can see it looks pretty much the same except it's got spaces, well, it's got more spaces, it's got six of them, so it runs six servos that we can run in. Um, here's a, one from a different make, different manufacturer. This one's got eight connections, but in essence, they all do exactly the same thing. We're gonna focus on the three channel, and then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set all this up to control the servo. Now, on the radio, we can see here there is a button that says bind. What we have to do is we have to bind the transmitter to the receiver. And generally, the way this works, although check your own instructions for your own radio, because it might be slightly different, on this one, as on most, we hold the bind button, and as we hold it, we power up the transmitter. Most radio systems use that, that, that kind of system. It might be a toggle switch, it might be a button, it might be something in the menu. Hold the bind button and power up the transmitter. Now before we do that though we need to set up the receiver. What we have is a little bind pin, it will have come with your receiver. This little bind pin needs to be plugged into the port that says bind and on the on the radio on the receiver here it says bind. This is port number three. So we're going to plug it in. It just plugs in very very simply, doesn't matter which way around it goes, just plug straight in. What we then do is we have to power up the receiver. So we take our six volt supply here, plug it in to the receiver and power the receiver up. And you can see straight away, there's a flashing red light on the receiver. And what that means is this receiver is ready to bind to the transmitter. It's kind of flashing saying ready to bind. What we then do, pop that down, we press and hold the bind button and power on the transmitter and we keep holding that bind button until that light goes solid, which it has done. That's why I've taken my finger off the bind button. If it was flashing, it's in the process of binding, but when it's solid, it means it's now bound to the transmitter. What we now do, we turn our transmitter off, take our bind plug out, and we unpower the receiver. Then we get our servo or servos, because obviously remember this is a three channel, we can plug three servos in. I'm going to plug this one into channel one. Don't need our bind plug anymore. And we take our power, plug our power into our receiver. Now you can see it's actually still flashing there, look, but when we turn on our radio, it's now linked. And then if we look at our servo, if we come to our radio, our transmitter, we move our transmitter, control, and it moves our servo in proportion. And obviously if we had different servos plugged in, we could control our different servos with different switches on our radio system. And that is how you set up 
a radio control system and bind a system and obviously plug a servo in to control it. So that's how to bind a radio control system to the servos. Very interesting. Thank you, Master Maker, for These that. are really, really cool things. Though. I, I, I've come up with a new system, actually, which is... Uh... Well, let's just first tell them about this behind us, because oh, right, yeah, in the app yeah. we've been working on the dread mic. So in the next couple of episodes, we're going to give you an update on the dread mic and yeah. how it works. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of work on that, so it looks less like a scooter now and more like a more like a... pile of junk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Anyway. So, yeah, radio control system. So this is really, really, really super cool. I've come up with this system. Now... I don't know whether I should develop this or not. I don't, I don't know. Comments below. So tell me what you think. But it, it is unique. It is unique. And it's never been done as far as I know ever before. So what I can actually do here, let me just turn the system on. OK, there we go. When I move this joystick forward here, when I move this lever forward here, it basically moved my wife's arm up and down and up and down. What? And <laughs> it's a learning system. So when I move this joystick to the right, it moves the head to the right and to the left oh, and to the right away. and to the left and arm up and arm down. Do you know what I'm going to do? What I'm going to do is when we reach one million <coughs> subscribers, I am going to give away a radio control wife operation system. There we go. So one million subscribers. So get subscribing, guys. <laughs> if you need to know more about this amazing system, click that subscribe button below. Arm up, arm down, arm up, <laughs> left, right, arm up, down, left, right. <laughs> Bye. Arm up, wave to the audience. <laughs>